Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you because you brought your people together. And I'm asking, Lord, that you open our understanding tonight. Give us revelation in your word in Jesus' name. Inject your power in every life. Supernatural power. Heaven sent power. And we pray it should be a long standing experience in every life in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're reading from Matthew chapter 17. And I'm reading from verse 19. Matthew chapter 17. Verse 19, then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? Why could we not help him? Why could we not deliver him? Why could we not set him free? Why did we fail? Why couldn't we have success and victory in that spiritual warfare? And then Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hands to yonder place, and it shall remove. And nature remove. Yeah. Your mountain will be removed, yeah. and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Yeah. How be it? This kind goes not out, tell me, by prayer and fasting. Tonight we are looking at a very important subject. And I pray that God will grant every one of us understanding in Jesus' name. We're talking about the power of prayer and fasting with faith. The power of prayer and fasting with faith. Prayer is important. Prayer is essential. Prayer is indispensable in the Christian life in Christian service, as well as in Christian ministry. The Christian who prays is the Christian who has power. The Christian who seeks the face of the Lord in prayer, fervent prayer, faith-filled prayer, saturating of prayer, a kind of prayer that moves the hands of the Almighty God, the Christian, the minister, the soul winner, the Christian worker who prays is the Christian worker, Christian leader that has power, yet in asking and receiving, in praying and prevailing, in seeking and possessing, faith is necessary. Because Jesus said, when they said, why couldn't we do that? He said, because of your unbelief, verily I say unto you, if ye have faith, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this very mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea. He says, It shall be done, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. And then Jesus said, How be it? There are times when fasting will have to come in. How be it? This kind goes not out. But by prayer and fasting, please understand, knowledge gives us assurance of what is freely given unto us. Knowledge gives us assurance of what is freely given unto us. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We'll be given salvation. That's a free gift. And we don't need to fast before we can get saved. Hold on. The people of Nineveh, they fasted. And then they saw the face of the Lord. And the Lord gave them forgiveness. But please understand, they didn't know the Bible. They didn't have the knowledge. They didn't understand that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And Jonah didn't tell them. Jonah just said, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. 
shall be destroyed. And because of that on their own, this is what they thought. Those people were pagans. Those people were heathens. Those people did not have the watch of God to lead them and to tell them salvation is free. Salvation is a gift. And then not only that, healing. The healing that God gives us, look at all those people that came. A leper came, cleansed. The blind came, opened eyes. And the lame rose up and walked. And Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. What I have, I give unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And so salvation is free. Healing is free. Sanctification is free. Righteousness is free. Holy Ghost baptism. He shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And he shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, to the uttermost part of the earth. And so that power of the Holy Ghost, baptism in the Holy Ghost, is free. Victory is free. Dominion is free. I know that you've read some scriptures and it says uh, this one fasted and this happened. Yes, but you need to understand that when you have knowledge, there are some things that knowledge will clear for you. For example, look at David who fasted how many days? Seven days. Because of that child that was sick. And eventually the child died. And David said, give me food. He said, when the child was sick, and the child was still here, you were fasting. He said, what can I do? Now the child is dead. And I cannot bring him back. Notice that. I cannot bring him back. Elijah will not say that. The child is dead, and he told Elijah. And Elijah didn't have to fast because he had the Spirit of God upon him. And he knew it was the Spirit of power. He went in there, and that child rose up. David said, what can I do? The child is gone. I cannot bring him back. I will go to him. Elisha will not say that. Elisha had a double portion of the spirit on Elijah. And when the child was dead, he just went there. And in the name of the Almighty God, that child rose up. When David said, what can I do? The child is gone. And what can I do? He will not come back to me, you know. Peter will not say that. Dorcas was dead. And now Jesus had given them power. And he said, he that believeth on me, the works I do, he shall do. And greater works than this shall he do, because I go to the Father. And he showed Peter that Dorcas was dead. She went in there and she prayed and then rose up and said, Dorcas, come back to life. And Dorcas came back to life. I'm telling you something. When you have knowledge, you will not just say, okay, look at what I have. Look at what I don't have. And because of that, I must fast. Of course, if you fast, add faith. Of course, if you go without food, you add faith and power will be upon your life in Jesus' name. You remember, he has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And when you know that truth and you have that truth and you pray on the basis of that truth, great, great things will happen. Even in your life tonight, somebody there, great things will happen in your life. Prayer demands and faith receives. You see, it's in prayer, we're demanding, we're demanding. And it is faith that receives. Prayer decrees. You make a decree by prayer. And it is faith that realizes the fulfillment of that decree. But you know, you must trust always in the Lord for prayer to be answered. And there are times when faith is weak. And when faith is weak, fasting comes in. And that fasting will destroy unbelief. I said fasting will destroy unbelief. That's why Jesus said, this is because of your unbelief. You could have done that. Because if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you will say, you'll not be afraid from today. You'll not be afraid of any mountain. 
you will not be afraid of principalities and powers and you will say my brother dear I said you will say my sister dear I said you will say it will be done in Jesus name fasting destroys unbelief and fasting strengthens faith fasting gives the prayer of faith greater power in spiritual warfare fasting gives your faith greater power in spiritual warfare i'm talking to you tonight as i said on the power of prayer and fasting with faith three things we're looking at number one the power and potentials of scriptural fasting the power and the potentials of scriptural fasting point number two the practice and the perplexity of sterile fasting there's some um, fastings that have sterility deadness there's no product there is no answer and that's why the Israelites were asking wherefore have we fasted and you have not answered that was sterile fasting the practice and the perplexity of sterile fasting point number three prevailing prayer tonight somebody there will prevail I said somebody there will prevail prevailing prayer with steadfast faith prevailing prayer with steadfast faith tell me number one the power and the potentials of scriptural fasting look at Isaiah chapter 58 Isaiah chapter 58 and I'm reading from verse 6 it's not this the fast that I have chosen to lose the bands of wickedness and to undo the heavy bodies and to let the oppressed go free and that she break every yoke every yoke is broken yeah. and when you are fasting you look at things you can do by yourself and you look at your neighbors you can help and if there are people that are you know there's wickedness you lose that wickedness if there's anybody you place on people you remove those bodies and if you oppress anybody you let them go free that time you are fasting it will assist in your prayer is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house and when thou seest the naked that thou cover him and thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh is telling us the life we ought to live the attitude we ought to have and the help we need to render and the love we need to manifest to people while we're fasting and then the openness intimacy if you are a wife you are intimate to your husband if your husband you are fasting you'll not say because I'm fasting that you are angry you have bad temper no it says that you will not hide yourself from your own flesh then look at the power then look at the potential shall thy light break forth as the morning I thought somebody will say amen, amen thine health shall spring forth speedily if you have any health challenge and then you wait on the lord and you pray scripturally and you fast scripturally you are going to get well you will not die what they call incurable disease will not bother you in your body in jesus name and thy righteousness shall go forth before thee the glory of the lord shall be thy rear word that is it will guard you guide you and protect you look at verse 9 then shall thou call and the lord shall answer it's talking about the result of praying and fasting and you must have a definite request a definite petition when you are fasting and then it says thou shalt cry and the almighty god shall say here i am if thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke the putting forth of the finger and the speaking of vanity if thou drop out thy soul to the hungry when you are fasting you are doing without food 
but then there are hungry people around you who are not fasting you are sending food to them and you are sending materials to them you are helping them while you are waiting upon the lord you are not saying well i'm hungry why should they be hungry but you are fasting as you are fasting is the time to look around you and see the needs around you and meet those needs around you and satisfy the afflicted soul then shall thy light rise in obscurity i said thy light will rise in obscurity and thy darkness as the noonday the lord shall guide thee continually at every crossroad as you wait upon the lord you are fasting the lord will guide you and the lord will show you the right way and satisfy thy soul in drought joblessness will go unemployment will go famine will vanish away and make fat thy bowls and thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not your provision will not fail and they that shall be of thee your children shall build the old waste places thou shalt raise up the foundation of many generations and thou shalt be called thou shalt be called the repairer of the bridge the restorer of paths to dwell in if thou turn away thy foot from the sabbath from doing thy own pleasure on my holy day and call the sabbath a delight the holy of the Lord honorable and shall honor him not doing thine own ways on the Lord's day not uh, you know making market on the Lord's day and not still you know commercializing you know, whatever it is on the Lord's day not finding thine own pleasure no speaking thine own words then then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it the mouth of the Lord is speaking to you blessings will come upon your life do you see that that's the result the result of praying and fasting we're looking at second chronicles chapter 20 second chronicles chapter 20 and i'm reading from verse 3 and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all judah there's a real problem here insurmountable so great that Jehoshaphat the king knew he had no power he had no strength to overcome the enemy and so he proclaimed a fast when there's any problem in your personal life you have prayed normal prayer no answer and you have read the promises no answer or it's against your family i would say why should this be or it's against the community where you are this thing that joshua did is what we can do we can call it fast in the local church we can call it fast in the central church we can call it fast in the family husband wife children everybody this sin is beyond us this sin is going to drown us it's going to destroy the family and we say even if it's one day and we say even if it's two days or three days we fast and wait upon the lord your victory is sure Look at verse 4. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord, even out of all the cities of Judah. They came to seek the Lord. Look at uh, verse 20. The whole chapter is very important. You can read by yourself. And he rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, these people that have come together and they have fasted 
and they have prayed, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, and so shall ye be established. You see, during the time of praying and fasting, we need to believe in the Lord our God. During the time of fasting and praying, we need to manifest faith. And it says, believe as prophets, and so shall ye prosper. Somebody there is going to prosper. Yeah. And when they had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever you see the time of praying and fasting is not the time of uh, maybe there are people that cry that's alright for some time there are people that are sorrowful when they are praying and fasting that's right for some time but then you turn around and you take the hymn book and you begin to sing as you sing standing on the the promises then after singing that you go to another one sweet is the promise then you go to another one never be sad or desponding you go to another one leave it there leave it there and as you are singing as while you are praying and fasting the victory will come yeah. the victory has come upon your life already in Jesus name look at verse 22 and when they began to sing and to praise the Lord sent ambushments against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir and then he goes on to say which were come against Judah and there was meeting and there was meeting and there was meeting that means victory has come. Look at it. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Seir, utterly to slay and to destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone held to destroy another. That means those demons will destroy themselves. Those evil powers will destroy themselves. And those occulted powers will destroy themselves. While well, you're praying and fasting, and you're praising the Lord, and you're making your petition, and then you're singing praises unto the Lord. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, and behold, there were dead bodies falling to the earth, and none escaped. That tells us then the victory is ours. Victory is ours. Victory is yours. Esther chapter 4. Esther chapter 4. Here was a problem. A problem that came on all the Jews. No exception. You know, sometimes a problem might come your way. And as you look at daddy and mommy and children and son and daughter, looks like everybody has a share of the problem. But you know, that's the time to abandon food. That's the time to say, we're going to take this into the Lord and thank God we're going to have the victory. If you will do what they did in the book of Esther, what they did in the Old Testament, you are going to have the victory. Esther chapter 4 verse 1, when Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and bitter cry and came even before the king's gate for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth and in every province whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came there was great mourning among the Jews look at this look at this and tell me the word fasting and fasting you see they were so sorrowful because Haman had written something a letter negative to destroy all the Jews just because Mordecai will not bow down, will not bend down to him. And he said, all those Jews, anybody connected with Mordecai, I'm going to destroy them. And he had asked the king, and the king had given his ring, a signet, a signature. And once something was reaching in their territory like that, in that nation like that, that was all. It was irreversible. 
maybe you have a problem that appears irreversible and you've consulted this the preach irreversible you've consulted that you've looked at science and medicine and prayer and church and everything and it looks the problem is irreversible there's still one weapon that will solve the problem I said there's one weapon that will solve the problem as you wait on the Lord and you pray it says I'm fasting and weeping and wailing and many lay in sackcloth eventually you know Esther was a Jewish lady a Jewish woman but married unto the king she was in the palace and she didn't know what was happening until they told her that uh, Mordecai her uncle was in this condition and then she says uh, good clothes to him and says that don't be sorrowful you should not be in that condition and then Mordecai said to her and said Look at what has happened. We're gone. We're destroyed. And evil is determined against us. When Mordecai said, go to the king and ask for a petition that we will not be destroyed. And Esther replied and said, the king has not called me all this time. And if anybody goes in without being called, the person could be killed. And so Mordecai said, don't you think that we are safe? that you are secured, that you are protected in that place where you are. If you don't go, you and your father's house will be destroyed and God will raise up a deliverer from another place. Look at what Esther now said. I'm reading from verse 16. Esther in verse chapter 4 verse 16, go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and what should they do fast ye for me fast ye for me fast ye for me whenever we are now say, fasting in the church and everybody is fasting it's not everybody that has problem but the whole church is fasting for you i said the whole church will be fasting for you that problem must be solved the amen there is so weak and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink. That's the meaning of fasting. Neither eat nor drink. If it's just a day, neither eat nor drink. If it's just for two days, neither eat nor drink. If it's just for three days, neither eat nor drink. Three days, night and day, I also and my maidens will tell me, fast likewise. And so, will I go in unto the king which is not according to the law and if I perish I perish if I perish I perish did Esther perish tell me out aloud no when you wait on the Lord you will not perish you will not die that problem will not drown you you will not be swept away with that problem as you are waiting upon the Lord what's the result of that fasting and praying chapter 8 of Esther Esther chapter 8 I'm reading from verse 4 then the king held out the golden scepter toward Esther so Esther arose and stood before the king and said if it please the king and if I found favor in his sight, and the thing seemed right before the king, and I be pleasing in his sight, let it be written to reverse the letters devised by Haman, the son of Amedasa, the Agagite, which he wrote to destroy the Jews, which are in all the king's provinces. Here is a request. Here is a request. And you know, God gave uh, Esther wisdom when at the first time uh, that both Haman and Esther and uh, the king, when the king said, what do you want? He said, I want you to come again. I have a feast for you. And now in this second feast, Esther now opened up and said, my people are under danger. The Jews are under danger. And this Haman wants to destroy us. And so if it pleases you, you will give a writing and then everything will be reversed. Every negative thing written against you will be reversed. Yeah. Reaching against your family will be reversed. Yeah. 
and reaching against your destiny will be reversed in Jesus' name. And look at this in verse, in verse 7. Then the king Ahasuerus said unto Esther the queen and to Mordecai the Jew, Behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman. And him have they hanged upon the gallows because he laid the signs upon the Jews. Write ye also for the Jews as it liketh you. Make your request, whatever you want, as it liketh you. And the Lord is telling you tonight, write your request as it liketh you. I thought you'd light up. I thought you'll understand something you've never got before is coming your way tonight in Jesus' name. Write ye also for the Jews as it liketh you in the king's name and seal it with the king's ring for the writing which is written in the king's name and sealed with the king's ring may no man reverse. Everything you are going to ask as you wait upon the Lord, it will not be reversed in Jesus' name. Look at verse 15. And Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white, and with a great crown of gold, and with a garment of fine linen and purple. And uh, the city of uh, Shushan rejoiced and was glad. And the Jews at light and gladness and joy and honor and in every province and in every city whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came the jews had joy and gladness a feast a good day and many of the people of the land became jews for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. It's coming. I said it's coming. Now we come to Joel. Joel chapter 2. In Joel chapter 2, we're reading from verse 15. Joel chapter 2. Reading from verse 15. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priest and the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar and let them say spare thy people O Lord they come together now already they sanctify fast they set apart a fast and they pray to the Lord spare thy people O Lord and give not thy heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them the heathens will not rule over you Pagans will not rule over you. Unbelievers will not rule over you. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? And the Lord said, If we do that, look at the result. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto these people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil and ye shall be satisfied therewith and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen but I will remove far off from you the northern army I will drive him into the land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and is in the path toward the uttermost sea. And his stink shall come up. And his ill savor shall come up. Because he has done great things. Fear not. You are fasting. You are praying. You are waiting upon the Lord. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice. 
For the Lord will do great things. For the Lord will do great things. Verse 25, and I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. The canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army, which I sage among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass up to all that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Also upon my servants and upon my handmaids in those days I will pour out my spirit. The start it you and it shall come to pass. That whosoever, that whosoever, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Shall be delivered. And then it goes on to say, for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord has said and the remnant whom the Lord shall call. You can see in all that we have read there are so many other verses but this we know scriptural fasting gives power to prayer and gives added force to faith. Prayer and fasting, number one, reverses the weakening of your faith. When your faith is weak, and then it's going down, down and down, and then you pray and you fast, your weakened faith will be reversed. Number two, it activates spiritual dormant power. The power that was dormant inside you. As you wait on the Lord, your, that faith will be activated with the power. Number three, it grants supernatural wisdom and solution to seemingly unsolvable problems. That's what we read in the book of Esther. It was seemingly unsolvable, that problem, but with prayer and with fasting, wisdom came, solution came. Number four, it opens doors of revelation and heavenly treasures. Daniel prayed, and then the angel came from heaven and gave him revelation. Number five, it gives overcoming power, it gives recurrent temptations. Temptation comes, 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 and it's recurrent, and it's coming over and over, and you don't have the strength. You're even tired. Why all these? Am I the only one? As you fast and pray, the Lord will give you power against those recurring temptations in Jesus' name. Number six, it overpowers deadly demonic powers, principalities, and powers. That the, the, the principalities and powers have been oppressing you and tormenting you. And then you say, enough is enough. Church tonight, I said enough is enough. Yeah. Then you go to the Lord with prayer and fasting. Those principalities and powers will be defeated in Jesus' name. Yeah. Number seven, prayer and fasting moves insurmountable obstacles confronting families and confronting communities. It's insurmountable. It looks like we cannot overcome. But thank God our season of victory has now come. Number eight, it achieves supernatural exploits hitherto unknown. The exploits you have never known. The victory you have never known. As you pray and you fast, you will see that spiritual exploits you never knew will come to you. Number nine, it transforms weak believers to unconquerable champions. Unconquerable champions. Unconquerable champions. Are they in the house tonight? Unconquerable champions. Where are they? I said, where are they? As you wait upon the Lord and you present that weakness before the Lord, you become unconquerable in Jesus' name. We're coming back to Isaiah chapter 58. 
Isaiah chapter 58 and I'm reading now from verse 1 Isaiah chapter 58 reading from verse 1 it says in Isaiah 58 verse 1 cry aloud spare not lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God they ask of me the ordinance of justice they take the light in approaching to God wherefore have we fasted say they and thou seest not wherefore have we afflicted our souls and thou takest no knowledge you see they were asking a question and they said why why are we fasting and it appears there's no result why are we waiting upon the lord and we cannot see the evidence that we're praying and fasting and waiting upon the lord and the lord now was going to give them the answer you see there are people that fast and the sterility in that prayer in that fasting the fasting is barren the fasting is unproductive and it's what happened to them and they were saying why why i'm going to use the letters of the word fasting f falsehood because of falsehood uh, have you noticed that uh, jezebel wrote to the people in the city when Naboth was living and said sanctify a fast proclaim a fast and when you proclaim that fast bring Nebot and put him on a kind of ivory tower and say he is a great man and while you are doing that let some sons of Belial come and say he has blasphemed the name of the Lord and then kill him because he blasphemed the name of the Lord and then his vineyard will be given to Ahab the first stage were sold in that fast and eventually the judgment of God came upon Ahab and upon Jezebel and they died miserable death terrible death and the blood of Jezebel the blood of Ahab leached by dogs because of falsehood a because of abominations you see there are people they say they are fasting they are fasting and it's abomination look at ezekiel chapter 14. ezekiel chapter 14 i'm reading from verse 2. ezekiel 14 verse 2 the word of the lord came unto me saying son of man these men have set their idols their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face should i be inquired of at all by them should they pray before me they say they are praying and fasting but they have this abomination therefore speak unto them and say unto them thus says the lord god every man of the house of israel that setteth up his idol in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet i the lord will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols that i may take the house of israel in their own heart because they all are strange for me through their idols look at this therefore say unto the house of israel thus says the lord repent and turn yourselves from all your idols and turn away your faces from all your abominations you see that if they had idols in their heart not idols of wood but idol in the heart something that is contrary to the love of god and he said they are praying and fasting he said should i be inquired of at all by them f for falsehood a for abomination s for strife look at chapter 58 isaiah chapter 58 
I'm reading here now from verse 3. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 3. Wherefore have we fasted, say thee, and thou seest not. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and exert all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife, and debate, and to smite with the feast of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. He said, because you are fasting, but then there's strife, there's fighting. And because of that, that's why he will not hear cheap, a transgressing tongue, a tormenting tongue, the people who are fasting, and that time of their fasting, you know, because hunger comes in. While you are fasting, you, are, you might also be hungry. And because of that hunger, if you touch them like this, if you talk to them like this, their temper is high and their tongue is sharp and the Lord is saying, that's the reason I cannot answer. Number one, because of falsehood. Number two, because of abomination. Number three, because of strife. Number four, because of a tormenting tongue, a transgressing tongue. Look at Psalm 50. Psalm 50. I'm reading here from verse 16. Psalm 50, we're looking at verse 16. It says, but unto the wicked God says, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth, seeing thou hatest instruction, and castest my words behind thee. When thou seest a thief, then thou consentest with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue framest deceit. Because of the transgression of the tongue and because of the torment of the tongue, that's why it says it spoils your fasting. And the fasting becomes terror. It produces no result. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. These things hast thou done. And I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such a one as thyself. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. Let's look at First Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3. And here we're reading from verse 10. Tormenting tongue, transgressing tongue. In First Peter chapter 3, it tells us from verse 10. It says in verse 10, For he that will love life, and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and eschew it, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. As you are praying and fasting, you must understand falsehood will hinder the power of that praying and fasting. Abominations will hinder the power of that praying and fasting. And strife will hinder that prayer and fasting. Transgressing tongue will hinder I iniquity. Iniquity. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 14. Jeremiah chapter 14, and I'm reading from verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 10, it says, Thus says the Lord unto these people, Thus have they loved to wonder. They have not refrained their feet, therefore the Lord does not accept them. He will now remember their iniquity and visit their sin. Iniquity. And then he says, Then says the Lord unto me, Pray not for these people, for their good. When they fast, I will not hear their cry. 
because of iniquity. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Iniquity neutralizes the power of that prayer and fasting. And when they offer burnt offering and oblation, I will not accept them, but I will consume them by the sword and by the famine and by pestilence. And then end negligence. N is negligence. There's something the Lord is telling uh, that man, that woman, settle that, settle that, settle that. And other people have even come in and they have said, settle that, settle that. But it's negligence. It says, no, I don't have time now. I'm praying, I'm fasting, I'm waiting upon the Lord. I am praying. I want this miracle and that miracle. Look at Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. And I'm reading from verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. You know, the, he has a problem with his neighbor. He has a problem with a brother. And uh, the brother, the sister, the neighbor is suffering because of his action. And that brother complained, and that brother said, my brother, look at this. This is tormenting. This is terrible. This oppression, he will not hear. And then it says in verse 16, but if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he neglect, if he neglect, negligence, if he neglects to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglects to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man or and a publican. That is, he neglects to correct his ways. He neglects to apologize. He neglects to make things right between him and his brother, between him and his sister. And he says, I'm praying, I'm fasting, I'm waiting upon the Lord, and they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Nothing will disturb me. Don't talk to me now about settling anything, settling whatever. I want to pray. That prayer and fasting will not bring any result and then uh, G is guile guile and uh, let's look at this Zechariah chapter 7 Zechariah chapter 7 and I'm reading from verse 4 Zechariah chapter 7 we're reading here from verse 4 then came the word of the Lord unto me saying speak unto all the people of the land and to the priest saying when ye fasted when ye fasted and mourned in the fifth and the seventh month, even though seventy years did ye at all fast unto me, even to me, and when ye did eat, and when ye did drink, did ye not eat for yourselves and drink for yourselves? That is, your fasted. And then you broke the fast, and now you ate your fasting. That's what just yourself. Your eating. That was just yourself. Look at verse 7. Should ye not hear the words which the Lord has cried by the former prophets when Jerusalem was inhabited and in prosperity, and the cities thereof round about her when men inhabited the south of the place? Now look at verse 11. In verse 11, but they refused. They refused to hack him, and they pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone. You see, uh, there are people, especially religious people, religious uh, unbelievers, religious uh, people, they are not saved and they are not hearing the word of God and the Lord is saying, repent and get rid of the sin. Or there are backsliders. Or there are people, maybe they are not backsliders, but there's something the Lord is telling them. Correct this, correct this, correct 
correct this, but they will not correct them. And then they say, I'm praying, I'm fasting. It says in verse 12, Yea, they made their hearts like adamant stone, lest they should hear the Lord, and the words which the Lord of hosts had sent in his spirit by the former prophets, therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Therefore, look at verse 13, therefore it is come to pass that as he cried, and they will not hear, repent, they will not hear, correct your ways, they will not hear, apologize to your wife, they will not hear, take care of that your child, they will not hear, reconcile with your neighbor, they will not hear, stop the evil, they will not hear, therefore it is come to pass that as he cried, and they will not hear, so they cried, and I will not hear, says the Lord of hosts. You understand? Fasting without salvation avails nothing. Fasting without obedience to the Lord avails nothing. Fasting without clear conscience between you and your brother, between you and your sister, between you and your wife avails nothing. Fasting with pride. Fasting with some forgiveness. You know, the Lord says forgive him. The Lord says forgive her. Uh -uh. I don't have anything to do with him. I don't have anything to do with her. I will never forgive until we get to the other side no forgiveness but I know how to solve my problem prayer and fasting prayer and fasting unforgiveness will cancel the power of that prayer and fasting secret sin presumptuous sin disregard for the word of God will make the prayer and the fasting worthless and useless. These things will hinder men and women from getting to heaven. Falsehood, abomination, strife, transgressing, tormenting tongue, iniquity, negligence, guile will make fasting sterile. But thank God you'll take care of everything. I said you'll take care of everything. And if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and seek my face and pray and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. This is the season of answered prayer. I said it's the season of a new dawn. And that new dawn, answered prayer, will be in your life in Jesus' name. Point number three now, prevailing in prayer was steadfast faith prevailing in prayer with what prevailing in prayer with tell me steadfast faith faith is very important faith is the master key faith as you look at the Bible, I'll come to the New Testament. I'm looking from uh, Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21, verse 21. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith, if ye have faith, if ye have faith, and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say to this mountain, Be thou remembered and be cast into the sea, it shall be done. It shall be done. And all things, how many things? And all things in your life, I said how many things? In your family, I said how many things? And all things whatsoever, you shall ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. Any receiver there tonight? Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 22. Jesus answering says unto them, have faith in God. In the original, have the faith of God. He called everything visible out of the invisible. And have that faith, have the faith of God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, you'll talk to that mountain tonight. 
I said you'll talk to that mountain tonight. Whosoever, brother, whosoever, sister, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have, I will have, I will have, you will have whatsoever you say. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And ye shall have them. Luke chapter 17, verse 6. Luke chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 6. It says in Luke chapter 17, verse 6, and the Lord said, If ye had faith, you see that. Matthew says, it based on faith. Mark says, it's all of faith. And Luke is saying, if ye had faith, as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, be plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it shall obey you. Every plant, the heavenly Father has not planted, you will not put it tonight. It will get out of your life, out of your family, in Jesus' name. John chapter 14. John chapter 14, in verse 12. Very late, very late, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works I do, he shall do also. By faith, we are going to do that work. I said by faith, we are going to do the work. And greater works than these shall he do. Because I go unto my, unto my Father. Acts of the Apostles chapter 3. Acts of the Apostles chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 16. In Acts chapter 3 verse 16. And his name. Whose name is that? His name. I said whose name is that? Shout that name. And his name, Acts chapter 3, verse 16, his name, through faith in his name, has made this man stronger, whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. With that faith, you are healed. With that faith, you are perfect. With that faith, you have perfect soundness in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 19. Romans chapter 4, verse 19. And be not weak in faith. It's all of faith. It's all of faith. You want to be saved? It's faith. You want to be sanctified? It's faith. You want to be filled with the Holy Ghost? It's faith. You want to be endured with power from an eye? It's faith. You want to be delivered? It's faith. You want to have all your needs met? It's faith. You want the barrenness to vanish away? It is faith. And be not weak in faith. He conceived that not is somebody now dead when he was an hundred years old neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but he was strong in faith tonight he was strong in faith I said tonight you are strong in faith giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform able also to perform. First Corinthians chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 8. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8, for to one is given by the Spirit, the word of knowledge, to another, the word of wisdom, by the same Spirit, to another, to another faith, by the same Spirit, there's a gift of faith. Thank God that gift's available for you. To another faith, by the same Spirit, to another, the gifts of healing, by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. You must have one, at least one of those things, because faith is available tonight, and you are going to overcome in Jesus' name. Second Corinthians chapter 4, Second Corinthians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 13, Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, we have in the same spirit of faith. Thank God I have the spirit of faith tonight. I say thank God I have the spirit of faith tonight. Am I talking to somebody there? 
all your problems are solved. Those mountains are taken away. The tears are wiped away in Jesus' name. We have in the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe. Therefore, have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Galatians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 20. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and greater is the one that lives in you than he that's in the world. And a greater one will give you the victory every moment in Jesus' name. It says, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the face of the Son of God. I live by the face of the Son of God. The same faith that Christ manifested when he was here on earth, that faith is now available for you. I live, I live by the face of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 6 and I'm reading from verse 16. Ephesians chapter 6, I'm reading here from verse 16, above all, above all, even though you are praying, even though you are fasting, praying and fasting, above all, above the praying and the fasting, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench how many fiery darts? All the fiery darts of the wicked. You will quench every sin in Jesus' name. <laughs> Philippians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 13. This is faith talking, and this is your faith talking. I can. Somebody say, I can. <laughs> Impossibilities are cancelled from your life. Shout it again, I can. In my work, I can. In my profession, I can. In my church life, I can. In my family, I can. In the market, I can. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Colossians chapter 2, Colossians chapter 2, I'm reading here from verse 5. Colossians chapter 2, verse 5, For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, join and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Your faith in Christ and that faith is steadfast and you say nothing will shake me because I am complete in him. Look at uh, look at verse uh, look at verse 6. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus, so walk ye in him. Verse 9 for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete. And ye are complete. And I am complete. Anything that is missing in your body is supplied tonight in Jesus' name. It says, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities and power. First Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3. It says in First Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3, remembering without ceasing your work of faith. Your faith will work. Your faith will perform. Your faith will operate. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3. We're bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet because your faith Grows exceedingly. Your faith grows exceedingly. You had work of faith in first Thessalonians and now in second Thessalonians. If the mountain is increasing, thank God, your faith is increasing. If the problems are growing, thank God, your faith is growing. Ah, the problem of this time, the problem of this uh, period is higher, is greater, is bigger than the problem of uh, you know last year or ten years ago. But don't you understand? As the mountain is growing, 
my faith is growing my confidence is growing my power is growing it says we are bound to thank God always for you brethren big as it is meet because your faith grows exceedingly and the charity of every one of you toward each other abounds and then in 1 Timothy chapter 2 I'm reading from verse 15 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 notwithstanding she shall be saved in childbearing that a pregnant woman you will not die at the time of delivery in Jesus name the Lord will deliver you. The Lord will set you free. It says, notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith. If they continue in faith. While you are in that maternity and while you are about to deliver, continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. We're looking at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 3, and I'm reading here from verse 15, and from a child that was known the holy scriptures which are able to make the wise unto salvation through faith through faith salvation through faith security through faith sanctification through faith holiness through faith that is in Christ Jesus Titus chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 1 verse 2 Titus chapter 1 reading from verse 1 Paul a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ according to the faith, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie. God cannot lie. My God will not lie. I said my God will not lie. Everything he has said will be fulfilled, which cannot lie that he promised before the world began. Philemon chapter 1 verse 6. Philemon chapter 1 verse 6 that the communication of your faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus your faith will be acknowledged today I said your faith is acknowledged today Hebrews Hebrews chapter 11 I'm reading from verse 5 Hebrews chapter 11 reading from verse 5 by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and it says and was not found because God has translated him for before his translation he had this uh, testimony that he pleased God but without faith it's impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him verse 7 by faith Noah verse uh, 8 by faith Abraham verse 11 by faith also Sarah and then he goes on and in uh, verse uh, 17 uh, by faith Abraham again and by faith Isaac and by faith Jacob and by faith Joseph and by faith Moses and by faith all those Jericho walls everything fell down flat and your Jericho walls are falling down today in Jesus name James chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 5 James chapter 1 verse 5 if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of God you lack anything you lack knowledge you lack vision you lack power you lack focus you lack fervency and you lack passion if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and obey it not it shall be given him it shall be given to you but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. James chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 15. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Are you there tonight? The prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. The Lord shall raise him up. That's your wife. The Lord will raise her up. Your daughter, the Lord will raise her up. Your son, the Lord will heal him. Yes. Your husband, the Lord will raise him up. Yes. It says, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed any sin, they shall be forgiven him. Yes. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that she may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias 
was a man subject to like passions as we are and he prayed and he prayed and he prayed earnestly that it might not train and he trained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months and he prayed again you will pray God will answer your prayer this is a season of answer prayer he prayed again and the heaven gave rain and the earth brought forth fruit your life will bring forth fruit first Peter chapter 5 I'm reading from verse 8 first Peter chapter 5 verse 8 be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a running lion walketh about seeking whom to devour but you have escaped from his hand ah, he will not he will not devour you whom receives steadfast in the faith receives steadfast in the faith he will flee from you in Jesus name and then we come to second Peter second Peter chapter 1 reading from verse 5 besides this Give all diligence and add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. You have the victory already. In first, in first John chapter five, I'm reading from verse four. First John chapter five, reading from verse four. For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Tell me, even our faith. Chapter four, first John chapter. Chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 4. Ye of God, little children, any child of God here tonight, any servant of God here tonight, ye of God, little children, and I've overcome them, and I've overcome them because, 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 because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Look at chapter 3, chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 22. Chapter 3, reading from verse 22, it says, And whatsoever, and whatsoever, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and we do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Now I've read all this to you for you to understand. Faith is a master key. By faith, we're going to overcome. Through faith, you have overcome already. And you have abide in faith, you will always overcome in Jesus' name. We're saved by faith. We're sanctified through faith. We're purified by faith. We're healed through faith. We're delivered through faith. We're baptized in the Holy Ghost through faith. We're preserved through faith. We overcome Satan through faith. We conquer demons through faith. We overcome the world through faith. We inherit the promises through faith. We have everything the Lord has promised through faith. And tonight you are going to inherit in Jesus name. We are studying about praying and fasting tonight but can I just remind you yes fasting is legitimate and fasting is right but you understand Enoch by faith no fasting. Noah by faith no fasting. Abraham by faith no fasting. Ezekiah set your house in order. You are going to die. No fasting. He turned his face to the wall and by faith he said no I am not ready to die yet. I'm looking at somebody there. You are not ready to die yet. And so you find even Gideon, no fasting but faith. Joseph, no fasting but faith. Solomon, no fasting but faith. Elisha, Elisha, ask me what I'm going to give you before I go away from you. I want a double portion of your spirit. No fasting for Elisha. And he got it. And you are getting it tonight in Jesus' name. Look at the 70. The 70 returned with joy. And he said, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. No fasting but faith. And Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power over all the power of the enemy. And from tonight, by faith, nothing shall by enemies hurt you in Jesus' name. 
Stephen. Think of Stephen, and think of Philip, and think of Sarah, and think of Deborah, and think of Anna. No fasting, but they held on to those promises of God by faith, and they overcame unwavering faith, undeniable faith, faith in Christ, unfailing promises. You are going to have everything that God has promised you in Jesus' name. Faith is your master key. Pray, let there be faith. And fast, let there be faith. Make supplication, let there be faith. In everything you do by the throne of grace, bring your prayer, bring your fasting, but add faith and the master key that opens every door is given to you tonight in Jesus' name. Rise up and call upon the name of the Lord. You are going to prevail tonight. You are going to prevail tonight. Praying, 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 and having faith in the Lord. And knowing that whatsoever you are asking the Lord tonight, you are going to talk to that mountain and that mountain will move away. Every problem before you, you are going to challenge that thing and you are going to have the victory, victory, victory for you tonight in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer.